Hi, I'm Jen and welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new here, I am a self-taught artist and I run my own online shop called Fructus Illustrations where I sell stickers, enamel pins, prints, and much more. Over the past few years, I've mostly been creating art digitally on my iPad and today I'd like to share my drawing process specifically for how I create my character designs. I will be talking about how I go from a sketch to a finished piece as well as reviewing any of the brushes I use. But please note that this isn't a full tutorial, instead this is just an explanation of how I create art digitally. Also, as I explain my process, I'll be answering some of the questions you've submitted to me from Instagram in the community post I shared here last week. But before we get started, I'd like to say that I am incredibly thankful and appreciative of all the support and encouragement I've received here on YouTube. I've only started posting my videos in February of this year and we've already passed 14,000 subscribers. One of my goals for this year was to start my channel and my hope was to reach 500 subscribers. So you can imagine the shock I am when I saw how quickly my channel was growing in such a short amount of time. To show my gratitude, I am hosting a giveaway. So if you're interested in winning some goodies from me, please stay tuned to the end for the requirements to enter. Thank you again for all that you do and I truly appreciate you. Now let's get to the drawing. As a digital artist, I use my iPad Pro as my drawing tablet and I use the app Procreate. This app is only available for Apple devices and it costs about $13. But if you don't have an iPad, there are plenty of other tablets and apps that you can use. In Procreate, the first thing I do when starting a new drawing is to open a new canvas and you do that by clicking on the plus in the top right corner. For almost every new project that I do, I use a square canvas. There's no particular reason for this. I just started using it and it's just become habit. The dimensions that I have on my canvas is 3080 pixels wide by 3080 pixels tall with a 300 DPI. And the color profile is an RGB and I just leave it on the display P3 option that's here. With the new canvas open and ready to go, usually the first thing I do is turn on the drawing guide and then edit it to have the vertical symmetry turned on. I personally like my characters to be symmetrical, so this just helped me make sure that things are even on both sides. Today I'm going to be creating a little gardener bear character, so to do the rough sketch, I like to use a 6B pencil brush. I believe this brush, as well as all the other brushes I'll be mentioning, do come with the app, so you don't have to pay extra for these brushes. And in the brush library, you can make and edit your own brushes. As you can see here, I have two versions of some of the same brushes. For example, I have a 6B pencil color and a 6B pencil outline. These are the same brushes, but the only difference is in the stabilization and streamlined settings. On the outline version, these settings are set to the max, whereas the color version is set to the lowest. The reason I have two is because sometimes I like to color things quickly, so having the color version lets me do that without having to go into the brush setting each time. I also like my characters to have a consistent size and dimension, so I also like to copy over a sketch from a previous drawing into my new canvas. I'm going to use this bear in a raincoat for today and paste it into my canvas. Then I'll lower the opacity on it and trace the outline for the bear first. Then I'll start sketching out my idea for this character on top. Even in my sketching process, I try to keep things on their own layers so that I can quickly change and rearrange things as I go. While I sketch out this idea, I'll like to start answering some of the questions that you've given me. How do you come up with ideas to draw and what inspires you, as well as is it okay to use inspiration from other artists? So most of the time when I decide to draw something, I do have an idea in mind. These ideas are based on several different factors. Um, sometimes it's based on the current season or an upcoming holiday. Sometimes I get inspiration from things I see in my life, like the foods I eat or the things I see in nature, or perhaps from a movie or TV show that I recently watched. I get my inspiration from many things and even other artists, which I think is absolutely fine as long as it stays just an inspiration and you're not directly copying. But for the most part, I just draw things that I want to draw. Do you know beforehand if you want to make a sticker out of a drawing or does that thought process happen after you finish a drawing? The answer to this is yes and no. Sometimes I do plan ahead of time to make 
a sticker design and sometimes I don't plan that and I make that decision after the drawing is finished. If I know beforehand that I want to make a sticker, I will usually make sure that I can easily draw a sticker outline around the drawing. And when I don't plan that ahead, then I may need to adjust some things to be able to get a good shape. For example, my favorite peach Peachtober prompts, I turned them into prints and I wanted to make a matching sticker. I didn't plan it ahead, but I did have to make some adjustments on some of the stickers. How do you decide which designs to sell? When I was first starting out, I just took whatever drawings I had done and turned them into stickers and other products. But now I try to have themed shop updates. So for example, in the months leading up to December, I created Christmas and winter related designs. But sometimes there might be a drawing that I did that many people liked, so I will turn it into a sticker or a print. I mostly just create designs or drawings of things that I like or think people will like based on how they liked my previous work. I try not to think too much on what I think might sell well um, and what might not. It kind of always surprises me, so I'm always constantly just testing things out. For me, this works because I make all my stickers myself, so I don't buy a large quantity, so I don't have to test whether something will do well. What's your process for planning products and content? Do you plan months ahead or a few weeks? In my first year, I didn't plan ahead, which is something that I do not recommend. I just had shop updates randomly and it was kind of stressful. But now I do plan ahead and at the start of this year, I wrote down an outline of when I would like to have a shop update and ideas for what I would like to have in those shop updates. Depending on how many new products I'm making and whether I'm making them myself or outsourcing, the amount of time I give myself also varies. The bigger updates, which usually start around September and go through December, I do like to give myself a few months ahead. For other smaller updates, I usually just give myself a couple of weeks. As for the contents I create to market my products, I don't really plan those out in, a, in advance. I create the content once everything is done, and usually that's in the week leading up to the update. How was your experience using Procreate for the first time? Did you teach yourself to use Procreate? And do you have any channels you recommend for learning the app? So I've been using Procreate for many years. I think I first downloaded the app when I was in college, but I didn't really start using it regularly uh, until a couple of years ago. When I first started using it, I found it really fun and easy to use. I taught myself how to use it by just clicking around in the settings to see what it could do. And when I couldn't figure something out, I just looked it up on Google or YouTube. Um, so I don't have a specific or single source that I would recommend. I would just say, you know, play around with the app, watch some tutorials for the basics, and I think you should be fine. Okay, so now I finished the sketch and next I will work on the line work. For starting on the line work, I like to combine all my sketch layers and lower the opacity on the combined layer. This way I can easily trace over the sketch and then I'll add a new layer on top and turn on the drawing assist. The brush I'll be using for the line work is the Studio Pen with the higher stabilization and with the brush size set to about 40%. When I do the line work, I like to work from the back to the front and procreate the layer at the bottom is the furthest from the front and whatever is at the top is the closest. The top layer covers whatever is underneath, so I like to start at the bottom and move my way up so that I don't have to move my layers around too much. So for this gardener bear, I'm going to start with the body, then to the overalls, followed by the head and so on. Also, I like to create clothes shaped when I'm doing the line work so that when it comes to coloring later on in the next step, I can use the color drop feature and quickly add colors into my designs. Now let's get back to answering some more questions. How long did it take you to feel confident or comfortable with your art skills to start selling, especially while dealing with anxiety? This is a great question. I've actually struggled with anxiety and panic attacks before, so I know from my personal experience how intense those feelings and moments can be. For me, I had the worst anxiety during high school and college because there's a lot going on in my life and I thought it was just who I was. But as I got older, I've been able to separate myself from all the toxic and negative things and people in my life. 
And by doing that, I slowly grew more confident in myself and in my skills. And I've just begun focusing on what makes me happy and putting myself first. So for me, I can't say exactly how long it took me, but since beginning this art journey after leaving my past job, I have felt more like myself and grew more comfortable, you know, just being me. I started selling my art online uh, about six months after I started posting online and I just started to feel more confident and comfortable at that stage because I was slowly beginning to have a more consistent art style and that was kind of the reason why I felt comfortable doing it. How did you get yourself out there? Well, honestly, by not thinking too much and just doing it. I think it's easy to fall into the imposter syndrome way of thinking and it's normal and I have days where I struggle with self-doubt, but what I always remind myself is that there are people out there who are doing what I'm trying to do and these people are out there who are successful in pursuing their dreams and reaching their goals. And so I tell myself that if they can do it, why can't I? I think I tend to be more of an optimistic and positive person. So I tell myself to stay focused and determined and that's kind of what gets me going. How do you get over intrusive thoughts and anxiety over shipping, quality control, time management, and first impressions on your business and products? How do you manage that stress of trying to maintain things in order regardless of a busy schedule or the potential of negative reviews that might happen? So like I mentioned before, I have days where I struggle with self-doubts, imposter syndrome, or just negative comments and reactions. Those moments are tough to deal with, but they're also a tiny percentage of everything else that happens. So for negative reviews, reactions, or comments, I pay little to no attention to them. As for everything else that might make me nervous and anxious, um, I try my best to plan ahead and stay organized. My anxiety comes from not knowing and being unprepared. Being uncertain makes me nervous, so I always like to plan my week ahead and make to-do lists. I've also been using Notion for a while and it's been a real game changer. I can easily plan things out there and write down everything I need to know. Another way that I combat my anxiety over these things is by educating myself as much as possible. Whenever I'm doing something for the first time, I like to prepare myself by doing some research and asking questions. By doing this, I feel more prepared and more confident that the things will turn out just fine. Sometimes, however, things happen and mistakes are made, but that's part of learning. We're not perfect and I've just accepted that mistakes are okay because it gives me the opportunity to learn from it. How do you ensure water resistance in your stickers? The ink is fine, but the adhesive fails under some test. So I use online labels, weatherproof matte sticker paper, and I'll add a layer of, I use online labels, weatherproof matte sticker paper, and I'll add a laminating sheet on top as another layer of protection. The laminating sheets I use are the Avery self laminating sheets. I haven't had any issues with the adhesive when using the online labels paper. I've actually removed stickers from my water bottle and re-adhered them to the bottle again and they're still holding up. Um, so if you're having issues, I would try out other sticker paper or make sure the surface that you're about to put your stickers on is clean before you put them on. How did you come up with the shipping terms on your website in your FAQ section? I based my shipping terms on what I saw other artists and businesses. I just adjusted some of it to fit whatever I was capable of. How do you determine the shipping providers? I currently offer two types of shipping options. The first is for stickers and prints only, and it's through untracked stamped mail. The second option is for everything else, and it's tracked mail. I use Shippo, which is a multi-carrier shipping software, and it's linked to my shop, so whenever an order comes in, I can quickly compare rates from multiple carriers and then purchase a shipping label directly through Shippo. I will always go with the cheapest option that is within the delivery time that I promise on my website. And by doing this, I can make sure that the cost of shipping remains relatively low. Do you work another job to support yourself? No, not anymore. I have been self-employed and working on building my business since October 2021. My business is starting to bring in some income, but it's not a full livable income yet. 
And before I left my last job, I made sure I had a good amount in my savings. So from there and whatever income I do get, I reinvest back into my business. However, my partner currently takes care of our personal finances and I am super grateful for him for not only his support, but also for believing in me and encouraging me to pursue my passions. He is my biggest supporter and is always encouraging me to keep going. I understand that not everyone has this privilege and if I didn't have his support, I would probably be still working another job. What is the meaning behind your username? Fructus is Latin and it actually means fruit. I've always been a huge fruit lover so I felt like it was a fitting name and I took Latin in middle school and throughout high school so that's why I went with that language over others. How often do you post? So when I first started out, I was posting five times a week on Instagram, but now that I'm also on TikTok and YouTube, my posting schedule is a bit different. Right now, I try to post on YouTube once a week, every Friday, and two to three times a week on both Instagram and TikTok. But my main focus right now is YouTube, so there are times where I post a little bit less on Instagram and TikTok. After doing the line work, the next thing I do is add the color. Sometimes I do like to plan out my colors in advance, but since this is a fairly simple design, I'm just going to pick the colors as I go. As I mentioned before, when I was doing the line work, I like to create completed shapes so that in this stage, I can quickly color in the large sections. I keep everything on its own layer so that if I make a mistake, I can always go back and make adjustments. So I add a new layer underneath the line work layer and this is where I'll add in the color. So I'll select the line work layer and turn on reference and then make sure to go back to the blank layer below it and pick my color and drop it into that section that I want. Here I've dropped the color into the bear's body and then I will continue this process for the rest of my layers and all the other colors that I'll be using. During this process, I, it doesn't matter if I start from the bottom or the top, but usually I start from the bottom and do similar colors or the same colors at the same time and then just keep going until everything is colored in. So while I continue to add color, let's get back to those questions. What made you decide to post videos on YouTube and how do you get ideas for your videos? I've been interested in creating videos and I've been watching videos on YouTube for years. When I was a kid, one of my favorite Christmas presents was a little point and shoot camera and I absolutely loved taking it everywhere I went. Uh, I would capture the world around me and that interest never really went away and I still like to capture the memories and experiences I have now. So that was part of the inspiration to get started. I also wanted to start sharing my experience as a self-taught artist and business owner. I wanted to document my journey and also share my insight and all the things that I'm learning as I go. And that's where most of the ideas from my videos come from. I've also always wanted to have my own channel and to create my own videos. And I think I finally felt comfortable and ready to start because I was doing something I really wanted to do. And I was also in a space that I really enjoyed. I love my workspace and I love adding new things to it to make it cozier and more functional. My most recent additions are these lights, which were kindly gifted to me from Lee Pro. I got the Lee Pro smart table lamp with the wood grain finish as well as the LED light strip. And it just adds a little extra light to my workspace, which is something that I need when I'm working into the evenings or nights. If you're interested in checking these out, I do have an affiliate link in my description, so I do receive a commission, but it's at no extra cost to you. Plus, if you use the code 15 fructus, you get 15% off the table lamp, and if you use code 10 fructus, you get 10% off the light strip. And so far, I've been really enjoying the, having these extra lights when I'm working. The table lamp is super bright, and it just lights up my little desk area. In this final stage of creating a design, I will add the highlights, the shadows, and any finishing details. So I'll add this eye sparkles now and turn on alpha lock on all the line work layers. You can quickly do this by swiping to the right with two fingers. Then I'll get started with the shadows. I will select a color that is a darker shade than the one I want to add the shadows to. 
I will use the same brush that I use for the line work, which is the Studio Pen with the higher stabilization settings. It doesn't matter what I start with, but I'm going to do the overalls first. So I selected the darker blue and I make sure to create a new layer on top of the color layer and turn on the clipping mask and drawing assist. I then will add shadows wherever I think they look good or they make sense. I kind of just guess and put them wherever I think they go, but sometimes it might not make sense. But once I'm happy with how it looks, I will change the blend mode to multiply and lower the opacity. I just adjust them to whatever I like and it's usually something below 25%. Then I'll change the color of the line work. I like to color select the shadow and then adjust it to be slightly darker. And once the color is selected, I'll go to the line work layer and select fill color. And while I do that, I like to talk about the giveaway and the requirements to enter. Firstly, thank you again for all the support and encouragement. Whether you've liked, commented, shared, subscribed, purchased from me, whatever it is, I truly appreciate and everything you do has meant the world to me. So to show my thanks, I want to give away some products in my shop. Five winners will be selected at random and will each be given a $20 store credit to use on my shop. To enter the giveaway, leave me a comment down below telling me if you like gardening and leave your Instagram handle so that I have a way of contacting you. For an extra entry, you can also sign up for my newsletter and those who are already signed up are automatically entered. The giveaway will be closed at midnight on April 30th and I personally will be contacting the winners through Instagram DMs or by email on Monday, May 1st. Please be careful of any fake or scam accounts. I will not be asking for any of your personal information when I contact you to tell you that you won. Winners will input their information on my website when they're completing their orders. So just keep that in mind and please, you know, be careful with people trying to take your information over the internet. Thank you again for your support and good luck everyone. Now let's get back to finishing this cutie. This process is almost exactly the same as that of the shadows. I just select a lighter color and add it where I think the highlights would go. Once I'm happy with the placements of the highlights, I'll just lower the opacity a bit. And I also like to add what I call highlight lines. I just like my art to look bright and shiny, so I started adding these a while ago. There's no real reason to where I put them, I just add them where I think they look good. And the very last thing I do is a little bit of organization. This isn't necessary, but I like to group the layers and label them so that if I need to come back to change something, I can quickly find the layer I want to work with. And each group has a line work layer, a color layer, and the highlights and shadow layers. So for this design, I'll have a group for the body, the overalls, the head, the sprout, the hat, and the top details. And that's it, that's my process for my character designs. My process for creating a full illustration is a little bit different and takes me more time. But if you're interested in seeing that process, please let me know and I'll might make a video on it. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please leave me a like. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. If I didn't answer your question today, I'm sorry. There were just so many to get through and I will definitely be having more Q and A's in the future. So there'll be more opportunities later to get your answers. Additionally, don't forget to subscribe for more art related videos and if you want to further support me and my small business, please consider taking a look at my shop. The link is in the description below. Thank you again for all your support and your encouragement. I truly appreciate you all and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!